It has been 57 years since the Boeing 737, affectionately dubbed the Baby Boeing or the Workhorse of the Skies, took its first flight in 1967. Being known for its efficiency and versatility, Boeing is the best-selling commercial jet airliner in history with over 10,000 having been built. How is possible for Boeing to not only run such a long-lasting production for an airplane model, but also make it even more competitive until now? And is there an in-sight end for this aircraft? Let's find out. But before we start, if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please like and comment, and don't forget to subscribe so you'll be the first to see our next videos. Now let's dive in to answer the questions we need to delve into the history of the aircraft. Surprisingly, the 737 was initially conceived as a temporary solution by Boeing. Preceding its inception, Boeing introduced the Boeing 727 in the 1960s to cater to the short to medium haul market. However, the 727's design posed inherent compromises with divergent airline preferences for power, economy, and operational requirements. To be exact, some airlines wanted a really powerful jet that could fly in and out of short runways at high-density altitudes, whilst other airlines preferred something with only two engines for a better overall economy. Some airlines needed at least three engines to ensure safe overwater flights, as regulations prohibited twin-engine aircraft from being more than 60 minutes away from an alternate airport. There was also a widespread desire for an aircraft with a low ground profile, making it easier for airport staff to handle baggage with minimal equipment and to utilize integrated air stairs effectively. These factors led to the decision to position the engines at the rear of the fuselage as no engine could fit beneath the 727 wing at that time. This is why the 727 was initially designed with three engines at the back, with the Rolls-Royce RB163 Spey Low Bypass Turbofan initially chosen by Boeing. The Spey and its variations were highly successful engines, powering numerous commercial and military aircraft. However, Boeing later opted for the Pratt & Whitney JT 8D Low Bypass Turbofan, which offered greater power but was also heavier. Despite initially canceling out the power advantage, this engine showed promising development potential and was crucially smaller in diameter, which became significant later on. The 727 took its first flight in February of 1963 and entered service about a year later. However, shortly after its introduction, Boeing realized a problem. Originally planning two versions, the Dash 100, intended to seat around 125 passengers, and the Dash 200, accommodating 150-160 passengers, Boeing encountered challenges. Even the smaller Dash 100 proved to be too large for the intended market segment and overly complex and heavy for some potential airline clients. The three-engine configuration aimed to provide excess power for operating from short runways, sometimes at high altitudes, but not all operators required this level of power. While fuel efficiency wasn't a major concern at the time due to cheap fuel, high fuel consumption limited the range. Additionally, Having three engines instead of two significantly increased maintenance costs, the Douglas DC-9, a smaller twin-engine design that required only two pilots and no flight engineer, highlighted Boeing's challenge. Launched in 1963, the DC-9 prompted Boeing to respond to this competition. After considering a shorter two-engine version of the 727 and realizing it likely wouldn't be viable, Boeing transitioned to a design with a narrower fuselage, featuring five seats per row and two engines at the back. These complexities prompted Boeing to explore alternatives, leading to the birth of the 737. The pivotal moment in the 737's evolution occurred when Boeing engineer Joe Sutter ingeniously realized that the Pratt and Whitney JT-80 engines, with their smaller diameter, could fit the 737's design, enabling a six-people-per-row layout akin to the 727. As previously highlighted, the comparison between the Pratt and Whitney JT-8D engines and the Rolls-Royce engines illuminates a pivotal aspect of the aircraft design process. The slightly smaller diameter of the JT-8D engines conferred a distinct advantage, facilitating their accommodation beneath the wings while preserving the desired low profile of the fuselage, a fundamental requirement cherished by both airlines and Boeing. This strategic positioning of the engines engendered a dual benefit. Not only was it feasible, 
but it also precipitated a significant reduction in the weight of the aircraft's fuselage, a crucial consideration in the development of the new DC-9 competitor, ultimately christened as the 737. This architectural decision proved to be a master stroke, as it enabled Boeing to seamlessly adopt the six-passenger-per-row layout from the 727, leveraging substantial portions of its existing fuselage construction. Such an approach carried substantial strategic weight, particularly against the backdrop of Boeing's already packed agenda in the mid-1960s. At that juncture, Boeing found itself engrossed in the conceptual studies surrounding the iconic 747, an undertaking of monumental significance alongside grappling with the imperative of crafting a supersonic aircraft in response to the Apocalypse Concordat, jointly launched by Britain and France in 1963. In the face of these multifaceted challenges, Boeing evinced unwavering resolve, forging ahead with the 737, catapulting it into the aviation arena in 1965 with the inaugural model, the Dash 100 boasting a seating capacity of approximately 85 to 110 passengers. Subsequent iterations saw the advent of the slightly elongated Dash 200, which seamlessly supplanted its predecessor, offering a cabin configuration only marginally diminutive in comparison to the venerable 727. The lineage of the 737, intricately intertwined with its forebears like the 727 and even further back to the venerable 707, underscores a rich tapestry of evolutionary development. Despite its illustrious 57-year production tenure, the 737, under its design heritage, harbored inherent compromises right from its inception. Yet, despite these early teething issues and the palpable weight of time, the 737 remains a stalwart fixture in the aviation pantheon, poised to endure for many more years to come. However, the narrative of the 737's trajectory is inexorably intertwined with the advent of the conceptually ambitious 7 Jevon, envisaged to supplant not only the 737 but also its progenitor, the 727. Although in theory the Boeing 757 emerged as the de facto successor to the 727, flaunting ample power and passenger capacity, the reception was somewhat bifurcated. While certain airlines embraced the heightened passenger capacity of the 757, others deemed it excessive for their operational requirements, a testament to the multifarious demands pervading the aviation landscape. Consequently, Revised iterations of the 737, such as the Dash 400, gradually supplanted the aging 727 during the 1980s, even as Airbus's ascendancy in the market catalyzed the evolution of the A320 family. Boeing's fervent pursuit of innovation manifested in the Envision paradigm shift, heralded by the open fan 7 Jevon, replete with revolutionary attributes such as fly-by-wire technology and cutting-edge composite materials. However, the endeavor encountered formidable obstacles, particularly in realizing the potential of open fan engine designs, compelling Boeing to redirect its efforts toward integrating these innovations into the epochal Boeing 777. Concurrently, to counterbalance Airbus's ascendancy, Boeing embarked on a trajectory of iterative enhancements, culminating in the advent of the 737 Next Generation family. These enhancements, encompassing superior engines, wings, and avionics, represented significant strides forward in efficiency, albeit falling short of the transformative promise encapsulated by the open fan engines of the 7 Jesen. Despite this, the ensuing competition between the Boeing 737NG and the Airbus A320 families engendered a dynamic equilibrium in efficiency for nearly two decades until the advent of next-generation engine technologies spearheaded by Pratt and & Whitney and CFE International. The advent of these cutting-edge propulsion systems heralded the dawn of a new era, catalyzing the transition from the A320 to the A320neo family and from the Boeing 737NG to the MAX. The inception of the 737 MAX, underscored by intricate negotiations between Boeing, Airlines, and Airbus, underscored the pivotal role of engine technology in shaping aircraft efficiency. Amidst the backdrop of challenges, including the unprecedented grounding of the 737 MAX, Boeing's decision to recalibrate the trajectory of the 737NG epitomized its steadfast commitment to competitiveness and innovation. This strategic realignment, anchored in the ethos of recycling existing designs and technologies, constitutes a recurring motif in Boeing's evolutionary journey. 
emblematic of its resilience in navigating the winds of change. Looking ahead, the venerable 737 faces an existential juncture, besieged by emerging threats epitomized by the Airbus A220. Endowed with a perceived efficiency advantage over the 737 MAX, the A220 looms large on the horizon, casting a shadow of uncertainty over the trajectory of Boeing's stalwart workhorse. Analysts speculate that a stretched variant of the A220 could further erode the market share of the 737 MAX, precipitating a seismic shift in the commercial aviation landscape. As Boeing navigates these turbulent waters, the advent of a stretched A220 variant could portend the denouement of the 737's illustrious production run, signaling the denouement of an era and the dawn of a new epoch in aviation history.